Just a few hours ago, OpenAI has introduced GPT-5, and it's their fastest, smartest, and most useful model yet, with built-in thinking that puts expert-level intelligence in everyone's hands. It answers quickly when you want it to, when you give it a report, help me understand and summarize any annual and physical results. Boom, it just does it. It's great at coding. And GPT-5 seems to be a significant leap in intelligence over their previous models, featuring state-of-the-art performance in coding, math, writing, health, visual perception and more so it is a multimodal model it can do visual perception also and the beauty is that it's a unified system meaning that it knows when to respond quickly and when to think longer to provide expert level responses so there's no business of like switching on and off thinking and also changing the level of reasoning for each and every prompt that you give the next good news is that it's available to all users and pro subscribers get the access to gpt5 pro a version with extended reasoning for for even more comprehensive and accurate answers. So what's their unified system? With smart and efficient model that answers most questions, a deeper reasoning model, GPT-5 thinking for harder problems, and a real-time router that quickly decides which to use based on the conversation type. So basically, they have a real-time router, and based on your prompt or your query, it decides in real time the conversation type, the complexity, tools needed, and your explicit intent. So the router is trained continuously, and so if you keep giving continuous signals, it, it, it will just respond in real time. And once you hit the usage limit, you will be switching to a mini version, like it happens right now. Now GPT-5, it not only outperforms previous models, but it's more useful for real-world queries. They have reduced the hallucination, improved instruction following, and they're saying that they have improved the performance in three of ChatGPT's most common use cases, which is writing, coding, and health. So let's look into coding. If you look at this game, this is just developed by one prompt, and I can keep playing this all day long, and it's quite functional also. And let's look at the prompt that they have used for it. Create a single page app in a single HTML, with the following requirements name jumping ball runner goal jump over obstacles to survive as long as possible features increasing speed high score tracking retry button and funny sounds for action and events the ui should be colorful with parallax scrolling backgrounds the character should look cartoonish and be fun to watch the game should be enjoyable for everyone I can see all of this happening in the game actually so when we retry we can see that there's a parallax scrolling in the background and we can see that the character is cartoonish and it's fun to watch and definitely this model takes coding to the next level and in terms of creative writing it's able to translate rough ideas into compelling resonant writing with literary depth and rhythm so all that means is that it's going to help us with everyday tasks like drafting and editing reports emails memos and more the writing style of gpt5 and gpt4 can be compared in the table below so let's look at the comparison for example for a wedding toast on my left is gpt 40 on my right is the GPT-5. Write me a witty wedding toast for my friends. And they met at dinner party to discuss the work of Michel de Montani. And they're telling about their work and they're telling about their personality. Their love is surprising, but once you see them together, you can't imagine them not being together. The first time I met them, I felt like Giselle finally found her missing piece. Let's just read the first two paragraphs to understand how catchy the speech begins. This is GPT-40. Good evening, everyone. I'm lucky enough to call Giselle, a friend and every even luckier to be here celebrating and her Tyler today. Now Giselle and Tyler didn't meet on a dating app or at a bar or through mutual friends. They met at a dinner party. So it's expanding on whatever we gave. And GPT-5 on the other hand says, good evening everyone. I'm lucky to be one of Giselle's friends and even luckier to be here for this. Giselle and Tyler did not meet in an ordinary way. They met at a dinner party to discuss the essays of Michel de Montaigne because of course they did did. While the rest of us were still deciding between the cheese plate and the charcuterie, these two were debating friendship, honesty, and how to live well. Montani once said, because it was he, because it was I, tonight it is, because it was Taylor, because it was Giselle. Definitely this one is much more catchy and much more likable than this one. So they have 
improved on the uh, performance for writing. And they're also saying that GPT-5 crafts a witty, heartfelt toast with unique imagery, recurring motives, and layered callbacks, building to a satisfying payoff while making the speech feel truly authored for Giselle and Tyler. Okay, let's look into some evaluations. They're saying that it's much smarter across the board as reflected in its performance on academic and human evaluation benchmarks. Let's look at the uh, AIME competition map first without thinking the performance is somewhere here at 71 that's gpt5 python gpt5 no tools but with thinking we can see that it's now around 99.6 and that's gpt5 and gpt5 pro seems to have hit 100 percent accuracy so we can't argue beyond that next comes expert level math see that again gpt5 pro is 32.1 that's way higher than the other models for example openai 03 is just 15.8 and this is more than double that and with harvard mit mathematics tournament you can again see gpt5 pro is 100 percent and phd level science questions you see that gpt5 pro is better than all its predecessors like gpt40 and openai 03 it has hit 89.4 humanities last exam full set expert level question across subjects gpt5 pro is at 42 percent compared to the next best which is chat gpt agent browser plus computer plus terminal so it's next only to its own agent but there's a huge gap between the gpt5 model but there is indeed a gap between the pro model and the non-pro model and this is expert level questions across subjects if you really wanted to be an expert then you probably have to opt for the gpt5 pro and now comes the most exciting bit which is coding with the SWE bench verified gpt5 is now beats openai 03 it's a 74.9 with OpenAI 03 just at 69 with Ada Polyglot. You can again see that GPT-5 leads with GPT-5 leads with thinking and it beats OpenAI 03 again. Now we can also move on to instruction following and agentic tool use. And once again with the Tau benchmark seems to dwarf that of OpenAI 03 and GPT-40 making it definitely the best model even in this case. And then comes multimodal which is one of the specialties of this model. Model excels across a range of multimodal benchmarks spanning visual, video-based, spatial, and scientific reasoning. It can reason more accurately over images and other non-text inputs, whether that's interpreting a chart, summarizing a photo, or a presentation, or answering questions about a diagram. So let's look at the MMLU now. So with thinking, we are slightly better than OpenAI 03 and GPT-40, and that's the case across the board, whether it's MMMU or the MMMU Pro or Video MMMU. In all the cases, we can see that we have beat the previous models, specifically OpenAI 03 and GPT 40. And again, here it's the same story multimodal spatial reasoning. GPT 5 is better than its predecessors. Here comes the health bench. So, realistic health conversations. And even here, we are far ahead of the uh, OpenAI 03 model. And that's a good leap, actually. So, from 31 percent we have jumped to 46.2 percent in the challenging health conversations which is hard but it's definitely caught up in the healthcare side and also in terms of hallucinations it's gone way down now with thinking it's just 1.6 percent hallucination rate but we want this to be really zero because this is now health bench so we the model can absolutely not hallucinate at any cost now, after showing all those evaluations they're talking about how robust and reliable they have made the model gpt5 is significantly less likely to hallucinate than the predecessors and they're saying they're particularly invested in making the models more reliable when reasoning on complex open-ended questions and they've even added new evaluations to stress test open-ended actuality and they have measured gpt5 hallucination rate when thinking on open-ended fact seeking prompts from two public benchmarks one is long fact and the other one is fact score so these are long form factuality in large language models is one and the next one is fact score fine grain atomic evaluation of factual precision in long form text generation so these two are works that are published in 2023 and 24 so they have benchmarked on these and they have shown that the hallucination rate of open source prompts we can see there's a significant drop here for the openai 03 model it's 4.3 percent and it has come down to point just 0.7 percent with the long fact concepts and for the long fact objects again it has dropped from five percent to 0.8 percent and same for fact store 
from 5.7 percent it's dropped to one percent so there's almost zero hallucination going on there and they've also focused on honest responses so gpt5 with thinking more honestly communicates in its actions and capabilities to the user for that they've actually shown uh, example which I quite like. Consider the following chart and they're not given any chart and ask what time does the blue curve cross the black curve in subplot A. With the O3 model we can see a response like this which is that from the time axis in subplot A you can see mark at 5s and 6s. So for the same prompt GPT-5 says I can't see the chart you are referring to. Could you re-upload the image or provide the x-axis tick labels and roughly where the blue and black curves intersect in subplot A? Now that's super cool. Safer, more helpful responses. Obviously, safety is of most essence. Based on user's prompt, the model should either comply or refuse. So with GPT-5, they have introduced a new form of safety training called safe completions, which teaches the model to give the most helpful answer where possible while still staying within safety boundaries. And they've also given full details on the methodology metrics and results in the safe completion paper and here is the quick summary of the performance comparing gpt5 with openai03 both with thinking and helpfulness given safe in all three cases gpt5 is better than o3 gpt5 seems to use less effusively agreeable and uses fewer unnecessary emojis and is more subtle and thoughtful in following up compared to gpt4 o and they're saying that that's because it shouldn't feel like talking to ai it should feel like chatting to a helpful friend with PhD level intelligence. And in terms of GPT-5 Pro, they're saying that they're releasing GPT-5 as a drop-in replacement for GP OpenAI's O3 Pro. So if you're an O3 Pro user, you'll straight away move to GPT-5 Pro. It's quite likable because GPT-5 thinking is preferred 67.8% of the times. In thousand economically valuable and real world reasoning prompts, external experts preferred GPT-5 Pro over GPT-5 thinking. So they're just trying to convince that that GPT-5 Pro is actually quite worth subscribing to, which could factually be quite true. But GPT-5 Pro made 22% fewer major errors and excelled in health, science, mathematics, and coding. So how to use GPT-5 is a new default in chat GPT, replacing GPT-4.0, OpenAI 03, and 04 Mini 4.1 and 4.5 for signed in users. So if you're just signed in, GPT-5 is the new default in chat GPT, replacing GPT-4.0. You don't have to do anything just open chat gpt and type your question gpt5 handles the rest and they're rolling out to all the users be it pro team or plus or even the free users it's all they're just rolling it out with access for enterprise and edu coming in one week if you go to codex cli we can also start coding here with the gpt5 model so that's pretty much it about gpt5 as of now and let me know in the comments what are your thoughts and do you want me to do any other video about GPT-5 and I will see you in my next video. Take care.